Hey friends, thanks for joining me again today. Today I thought it would be super fun because I've had some requests for this. I thought it would be really cool to make a neat, unique, if you will, magazine holder using the um, practice of macrame to make the little canopy that it's gonna sit in. So, what we're going to need for today is our gold hoops. Yes, these hoops are super functional. We did use them to um, make the wreaths, which was great. But I'm gonna show you today how to use them to make the magazine holder or book holder. Basically, how we're going to do this is sew together the top using a macrame stitch and then have the magazine holder make like a little canopy that's going to be spread open like this and where my arm is is where the actual macrame is going to exist so it's really cool you can definitely buy these hoops on Amazon I got mine at um, lens mills but you can definitely buy them online and they are about 15 inches in diameter so quite large so how about we get started on this neat little project so you have a place to put your books so now that you have your hoop together and hopefully your rope or string I'm using jute rope for this particular project today just because I wanted something different from the typical white rope um, so here he is, we got him. I also grabbed two knitting needles from Dollarama, which I thought would be great stabilizers. This is actually what the macrame is gonna be woven onto, but they're gonna be used as stabilizers to keep the actual hoops open. So you can get those from your local Dollarama. All I did was take my tin snips, clip off each end, and I clipped the end, maybe about an eighth of an inch in, Took these bad boys and just squished the metal so that it was flat and kind of created um, a little bit of a Y shape and that's what's going to sit um, and straddle the actual hoop itself. So we'll macrame on there. So as you can see, knitting needle, the one side's done. I'm going to clip the other side for you while I'm on camera just so you get a sense. So take your knitting needle, take your tin snips put them in the center and clip down carefully because you want to make sure that your metal stays on either end and then just take your pliers and squish the metal so it's flat and is able to grab the gold hoops. Perfect. See? Just making a little Y shape there. He's easy breezy. So right away, we're going to weave these two hoops together with a piece of jute rope. See how there's little seams on the metal? I'm gonna use that as my starting point. So I'm just gonna match up my two seams and just tie And just weave my two ropes to get my two pieces of rope together over top of basic square knot. I'm gonna go under the two lines over the far left rope. I'm gonna take the far left rope, go over the two gold strands and through and pull tightly. And then I'm going to repeat again on the other side. So under, over, over, and through. You can get a little bit tricky holding this. And then you just repeat. So under, over, over, and through. Thank you. 
Made a little mistake, no problem. Can start that one again. So under, over, over and through. Okay, so now that we have our knot done on top, it's our square knot, um, there you can see. Sorry, the video is, it's very difficult to do a square knot and keep the hoop stable while still <laughs> videotaping, so sorry about that. Um, but now that we have our square knot done, yes, I've left these little tails um, out. I'm gonna actually, I will eventually hot glue them to the back of the handle, I guess you could call it. I guess it is like a little handle, it's quite cute. Um, but it's just enough to keep the two, it's just enough to keep the two gold hoops together, uh, which is lovely. So now we can start going on our macrame, which we will be weaving onto our knitting needles, which will eventually be tacked onto our hoops. So for the actual ropes themselves, you need a lot because we're going to do a really pretty pattern. So I have measured this is just one rope, um, 110 inches per side. So we have 100, so we'll have 220 inches once it's folded in half, okay? So that's all 220 inches right there um, of our rope. You always need a lot of uh, the actual rope itself once you start getting into kind of funky intricate patterns um, because of how it's going to weave. I'm going to cut about 12 of these um, pieces of rope here and as I'm cutting I'm going to actually tie them on with a lark's knot onto my one piece of or onto my one knitting needle just so that I can keep everything relatively organized. So. All you do with that is take your, whatever you're stabilizing your macrame to, you take that, you do a little loop once your rope's folded in half, fold it over top of the thing that you're stabilizing with. In this case, it would be our macrame, or it would be our it would be our knitting needle. And you fold it over and it's done. There he is, yay! So let's continue on. Uh, we'll cut about 12 more lengths of these and see where we're at. So now that we have all of our macrame loops onto the knitting needles, I'm going to take an additional piece of jute. I'm going to fasten it down onto the actual knitting needle at one end with hot glue gun. And then I'm going to carefully wrap it about two to three times on the knitting needle itself and going through each one of the macrame loops. I want to create a little bit of space between each of the loops so that the pattern, which we will eventually weave, lays really nice and flat and is nice and open. So take that additional piece of jute and wrap it a couple of times around the actual knitting needle itself, two to three times, and you can hot glue gun it in place, and then we'll go from there. So you'll see in the top corner, I have a grouping of four ropes already pushed off to the side. Right now, I'm just doing my quick groupings. So I'm working in strands of four. So just like when we were creating the handle for the gold hoops, we're going to be using the box knot stitch 
for this initial macrame. So you take your one strand from the farthest edge, you go over the two ropes and under the last rope. Then you take that last rope, go under the two and pull through, come on Linz, pull through that figure four. And then you slightly tighten and pull up ever so slightly. Then you're gonna repeat that process on those. So take that strand and go over and under, then under and through and pull. Then once you're done that and you've pulled it ever so slightly, you can move on to your next grouping of four. Okay, so that macrame took a really long time, so I ended up finishing it off camera. But right now, we're going to actually add the secondary, um, the secondary piece of metal, which happens to be a crochet hook, or sorry, not a crochet hook, a knitting needle. Um, so I'm just knotting the knitting needle onto the ends of my macrame. As you can see here, he ended up being quite a big piece, which is kind of cool. So I have my macrame needle here, and I'm just taking my strands two at a time, going over the knitting needle, coming back up and through the center of the two pieces so it's come up and through the center of the two pieces taking those legs wrapping them around and back so one at a time around and back take this one and you go through and back and basically just tying a little knot, well part of a knot, in the two pieces we just looped back. Just to secure it, just to secure it onto the knitting needle. So you can see there I've got three knots already complete and you just continue on. So you go over the knitting needle, around and through the hole you've just created. You take one piece, pull it back, over and back, and take the other one over and through. Tie in a little knot in the back. it to the knitting needle. Just continue on for the remainder of the piece. Now the reason I'm not fully knotting it is because I will eventually need to make sure that there's enough breathing room between the knots and the knitting needle. And it's just hard to gauge that right now while it's 
while I'm just trying to fasten it to the knitting needle itself. So that's why I'm just tying the first part of the knot and we can fully secure and fasten once all the extra pieces of jute have been secured to the knitting needle. Now what we have to do is fill in along here, just like we did on the top edge where we were wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. So it's all clean and covered and glued. I'm just going to get rid of this ball to make it easier to tie my knots. I definitely overjudged when it came to guessing the length of the actual uh, jute that I needed for the macrame um, holder. But that's okay. Um, better safe than sorry. At least I know that I had too much as opposed to too little. So c'est la vie. I mean, there is some wastage, but it is what it is. At least it'll turn out really This would be the macrame little hammock, if you will, that's going to lay in between the um, the rose gold, or sorry, the gold hoops. So now we'll just get to fastening this to the hoops. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out so far. I haven't made the macrame and the hoops uh, book hammock. Oh. I think we've just named it a macrame book hammock. I haven't made it with uh, jute before, but I really love the way the jute has that kind of gritty look to it, as opposed to a really clean kind of nautical feeling that a normal white rope would have. So um, let's finish up our macrame book hammock and get to enjoy it. So you'll see that I've marked on my gold hoops. I laid the pattern piece out and I marked on the gold where I wanted the little legs to fit. Marked them, made them even on both hoops. And now I'm just adding a bit of hot glue. Basically, I want that to dry onto the hoops to act as a stopper for the legs so that they stay in place and they don't slide down once I fasten the actual knitting needles. If I had a soldering gun, I would most likely, in lieu of using the glue, I would actually solder a little piece of metal onto the metal hoop. I think that would be a better approach to um, holding up the little knitting needles, but unfortunately I don't have a soldering gun, so um, we're just gonna work with what we have today, but that could be another option for you in the future. just because it is built on two circles, but I think that's part of the charm. It's quite a neat little piece of furniture. 